Uh, I'm Jeff Denworth, uh, co-founder of Vast Data. Thanks everybody for for taking a moment to uh, to hear an interesting story today. So I'm joined by Santosh from Beyond One, and uh, maybe we'll start by just introducing yourself and what you do for the company. So thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'm Santosh. Uh, I'm representing Beyond One as a company. Um, I'm heading the data analysis team in the company, looking after all the operations across Middle East and Africa at the moment. For those of you that don't know, um, maybe you can just start by explaining what Beyond One does. Beyond One is an investment company, so uh, they have recently acquired Virgin Mobile and Middle East Africa, also uh, Virgin Mobile Latin America operations. So we are more into telecommunications, uh, mobile financial services, gaming, etc. So we are really expanding very fast. I mean, this is just a start in this uh, uh, in, in this region. Have you ever met Richard Branson? Yes or no? Once. You did. Did you fly in a spaceship? He was here uh, probably in 2017 when we launched Virgin Mobile UAE. Yeah. So he, he's just been here for a day. So that's cool. We, we we didn't really engage or interact, but yes, I have seen him in person. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, billionaire. So tell me a little bit about the, the products that Beyond One offers and how you differentiate yourself in the market. Before that, I, I would like to like you know uh, tell a little bit about the company. So Beyond One intends to be uh, a leading digital service provider in the growth market across the world. This is their uh, intention at moment. So uh, having said that, they want to really enhance the digital experience by you know rapidly enhancing the digital ecosystem that is created and offered to the customers in the market. Uh, they also want to build something called hyper-personalized digital application based on the customer interest, not a static app for everyone, rather changing like depending on uh, the interest of each individual. So for us, the customer is very unique. So we want to like, you know, reach and approach the customer in such a way that he has this, uh, uh, he uses this app in a very way. So it, it's, I log on to the platform and I'm getting a, a personalized application specifically for me. That's correct, yes. Based on your interest and based on your usage patterns. So it keeps changing, you know, so it's very dynamic. Okay. So this is our, like, you know, goal going forward. That's cool. And so you position that against the competition saying everybody else is giving you basically peanut butter and we're directing specific value to specific customers in the market. Indeed, indeed, yes. Uh, we also intend to create kind of communities like, you know, uh, gathering people with common interests. So, so that like, you know, they can use this app in such a way that, you know, uh, people use an app in a harmony, like, uh, you know, uh, with same interest interacting with uh, uh, different platforms in the same application, let's say, you know, not, not limited or restricted to a particular service provider. Okay. This is something like, you know, very interesting going forward. So hyper-personalization sounds like a big data problem. Indeed, yes. Uh, we need to deal with significant amount of the data and then we have to be prepared. As a part of the journey, of course, like, you know, uh, we are exploring in the market to look for partners who can help in, you know, uh, scaling out our infrastructure, uh, being future proof, you know, uh, as as we grow, you know, the infrastructure also needs to suffice for this, which can leverage uh, AML use cases, you know, uh, analytical purposes and stuff like that, more real time use cases. So you're, you're, you're pulling in all sorts of different data types or how, how does it work? Yes, uh, we get information, of course, like being in the telco, uh, we get a lot of traffic, CDRs and stuff like that, which is very traditional. But on top of that, we get a lot of information from apps, content services, like you know, uh, different types of engagements, integration. So the information that generates by customer is coming from one two platforms. We need to capture that, store that, we love, uh, uh, make some segmentations, doing some analysis on that. And based on which, you know, uh, when we talk about this hyper personalization in future, uh, we need a lot of historical data. Like, we need to do a lot of research on the historical data, understanding how we can really segment the customer and how we can really understand the customer behavior. So, the, the, you, you're looking in the past for uh, user behaviors and things like that. Yes. But the business is entirely real time. If I'm getting a hyper personalized experience. Of course, yes. Yeah. Okay. It has to be seamless in a way, otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So, that's that's where the infrastructure makes a big difference. Well, infrastructure. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, so you recently became a Bass customer. That's right. Thank you very much. Um, so so talk a little bit about um, how you engage with us and, and you know how you got to choosing Bass. 
As a starting, we would like to implement a data lake concept in uh, Saudi Arabia operations because of all these different needs. Uh, at, in the beginning, so we were only looking at some storage options, you know, that, that can help us uh, store a lot of data. And then we tend to like, you know, bring some other uh, platforms that integrates with the storage and then do the analytical performance. That's, that's when like, you know, uh, one of our partners from Vertica has introduced fast team. So we had a couple of conversations and it's also very interesting. In a way, like, you know, we have been looking for some, uh, some platform that has this scale out architecture, you know, uh, doesn't have the traditional, the node based, you know, thing like, which is very expensive and, you know, to, to manage uh, on our operational way. But this scale out of architecture is something like, you know, very close to cloud, uh, which uses the privilege to, you know, increase the computing power using or reusing the same uh, information that has in the storage, you know, this makes a big difference for us to make a decision to go with us. That's interesting that you called it cloud. Um, you know, we, we kind of divide, designed the product with cloud scalable principles and not a lot of our customers flew into that, but that's, that's pretty cool. Just a point on that, uh, especially in this region, uh, there's a very strict confidence when it comes, comes to, you know, using data. Uh, we need to abide to the data protection law and stuff like that. So we cannot directly go to the cloud completely. So we need something that can be on-prem and then have the same kind of functionalities that we get on cloud. Sure. It, your own cloud infrastructure. Kind of, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd imagine if you're dealing with like call data records, then uh, some pretty sensitive stuff. Very much, yes. Yeah. This is, this is something very sensitive and then we need to be really careful, not just storing the information, but the way we store and then use this information. Yeah, you're, you're not putting it on Dropbox. Okay, so, um, so, so Vertica is the data warehouse. You're ingesting data from all sorts of different types of streams. You're ETLing it into Vertica. Talk about the pipeline a little bit. We get data like probably in structure, run structures, and structured, you know, sometimes uh, information from the real time will happen, stuff like that. So at the moment, we use ETL tools like Talon and um, Kafka Streaming. So we are also partnering with HPS Model Data Fabric. And that uh, that has some big data components, you know, uh, like Spark streaming, Spark engines, and stuff like that. And Vertica, on the other hand, uh, we use it for more than workloads, you know, that that uh, connects to the AI will use cases and also for the, uh, you know, the regular operation and reporting and stuff. And a, and a scalable data foundation for all of these services is important. So, talk a little bit about maybe why you chose Vast outside of, you know, if, if you've got some ideas. Um, Outside of it being cloud style infrastructure, any other things that kind of pushed you over the edge? One of the thing is uh, since we are using Vatica, then uh, Vatica supports this Eon mode, like, you know, which is on object storage. Object storage is something uh, uh, that's leading in the market at the moment. So people are coming out of the Hadoop infrastructure, you know, the yeah. HDFS is yes, getting a little bit of updated in a way. This market objects the new data lake. I think about it. Yeah, some, some sense. sense. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's one of the reason why we started exploring. And then the way the more we explore about Vast, we found interesting things like the inbuilt database that's coming in place, the data encryption, or uh, uh, the way it handles data automatically, you know, the metadata management, um, data replication. So this this is very fascinating. This is quite interesting for us in a bit. So it, this minimizes us, like, you know, in doing a lot of operational administrative work. Vast does it automatically and seamless. So it's very impressive. Yeah, the uh, data reduction in particular with uh, vertical style data warehouses, you should be, I think, quite pleased with what you get. So the data compression, you know, so you don't have to literally... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just in just data and then it happens the compression. Yeah, yeah. And uh, because it's all flash, it's always fast, even though you're really stomping down the data set so that you get good affordability of infrastructure. And because of the scale out architecture, you know, like you don't need to worry about expanding uh, computing and storage together. Yeah. You just add more hard disk so that the capacity is increased and you can still use the same computing, uh, uh, the power, uh, you know, that the panels bit. Yeah. You said hard disk. I said, yes, yes, this is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. If Beyond One doesn't work out, it sounds like you can work for Vast as a salesperson there. <laughs> no, it's more of like, you know, we are very much inclined on the technologies that, that you know, uh, pays a way for our uh, roadmap. You know? So what we have in our mind is something very much aligned with Vast. You know, this is where we have been much connected mostly. 
Cool. I, I would say, you know, just having met you, but but talking to the team uh, a little bit about you know, the discussions that we've been having, we're really interested in, in marrying our roadmap to the needs of organizations like Beyond One. So we're excited to see what we can do. Yeah, that matters, that matters the most in a way, like, you know, most of the partners of the engagements, they become very static at some stage, you know, uh, not necessarily growing, and then we always need to look for an alternative. So we are very careful in this way, like, you know, uh, from the beginning, we chose the partners in the right way you know, that we can uh, supply us for a very long time, and we grow together in a way. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Santosh, for coming. And uh, thanks for having me there. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Cheers.